Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, today is 11th of November and it's a mainstream uh, mainstream training session and we have Dr. Bill today and Dr. Bill over to you now. Thanks so much. We'll get started right away. I'll get the share screen going. Yes, it's allowed. Today is going to be quite interesting for you, I hope. I'm going to talk about something called the Say Yes program. Say Yes program. Okay. So what is that? It's a campaign to amp up your team results. Amp up, of course, means to rev it up, make it go better, faster, higher. Everything about your team performing better for you if you're a business owner or a manager. And it's all about mindset. The purpose of the Say Yes program is to improve client satisfaction. Number one goal. Number two, improve customer service. Empower the team. Yes, the team gets empowered by going through this Say Yes program. You'll see dramatic improvement on your team when everybody understands the, the concept. You reduce downtime and lost revenue. You results are going to be demonstrably improved. You'll be able to see the results. You'll be able to measure the results. So here's a statement. Lost time is never retrieved and cannot be made up. That's true in my business, the dental office. If a patient doesn't come into my office because they break their appointment or something happens that they cannot avoid, that time that they reserve for me to be with them is lost. I can't make it up. Nobody can make it up. It's just lost unless you have systems in place to create something to fill the void. And so the Say Yes program is designed to help fill the void and hopefully prevent lost time from happening from broken appointments, empty appointment schedules, unfilled needs. What is the cure for the broken appointment? I'm sure you have those. People don't show up for your meetings. People don't show up for the time you've reserved on your calendar. What we have to do is develop a mindset and an attitude of expectation that our clients will say yes. And they, they do that because the team says yes. An, an attitude is contagious. A mindset can be contagious. And so it starts with the team delivering to the client the aspect that we always say yes, that we don't look for negativity, we look for positivity. When opportunity knocks, the astute team member, the one who's focused and on purpose aware, will remember their training. It is something you train to do. It is something that you put in place as a manager in your team to act on the culture of the business and initiate the Say Yes campaign. So it has to be the culture of the business to do what we're talking about here. You have to have somebody that establishes culture and maintains culture and brings the culture along. It doesn't happen by accident, hopefully. It happens by purpose. If you let culture happen by accident, it may be the wrong culture that you prefer as the owner of the business. And so it's important for a team, top to bottom, to spend some time thinking about what is the culture of our business. And then when you get to the minor points and the Say Yes campaign would be one of the points within the vision and the mission and the culture of a organization. The Say Yes campaign is just one aspect of how to approach clients in a way that they say yes. 
if that's the goal. Let's talk about the seven top attributes of the campaign. Number one is mindset. Number two is attitude of the team. Number three is readiness. Readiness is something that can be planned and set up as a system. Readiness, ready for the client, ready for the person that you're doing business with, ready to be available with the answers that the people need when they need the question answered. There is an entry into the system, someone who is activating the Say Yes campaign has to recognize a need and activate the system. There's a comprehensive focus versus a simple answer only focus. And it has to do with that word we talked about earlier called gestalt. You see a little bit of the situation and you understand all of the situation. It's like you see an iceberg in the water, you know there's a lot more below the surface. The gestalt of an idea is you understand the totality of what's going on. And so you may see that there is a empty spot in your schedule. And instead of saying, oh, there's an empty spot in the schedule, what you do is you say, look, there's a failure to communicate. There's a failure to follow through. There's a lack of understanding among the parties. The agreements haven't been kept. There's something wrong. There's somebody who fell down on the job. It could have been the client. It could have been the team. It, it is not explained what is the problem coming from at this point, maybe, but we do know that there's more to it than just an empty spot. See, the, the, the employee, the team member, the manager who sees an empty spot in your schedule and doesn't think about the ramifications of that empty spot is not somebody with what we learned in the last couple of months is high emotional intelligence. Somebody with low emotional intelligence would look at it and go, oh, there's an empty spot on the schedule. But the high emotionally intelligent person will answer the call and say, we got to do something about the empty spot on the schedule rather than just acknowledging that it's there. One way we do that is number six is saying it's time. And then there are rewards for those who activate the Say Yes campaign. So let's go through each one of these. First mindset is, is having an open-mindedness to do things firmly in principle and flexibly in procedure. Let me repeat that mindset open-mindedness to do things firmly in principle. You set your principles logically in order about how you run your business. But things come about that happen that may disrupt that orderly flow of business. And so you have to be flexible in procedure and have a workaround. You have to have a way to overcome the obstacles. You have to understand your business well enough to get through the problems to help the customer, the client to their end goal. And so sometimes you've got to look at what meets the needs of the clients first, what meets the needs of the business second, and what meets the needs of yourself third. So that comes to the attitude of the team. Putting the client first and the business first, if you're an employee, makes sense. You'll be a more valuable team member when you do that. If you always put yourself first and don't want to see the client when it's inconvenient, then uh, you'll just have less clients. You'll have less uh, rewards. You'll have less advances in your career. So you do have to set boundaries, of course. You can't be totally given over to the whelms of the clients at all times or the clients. Uh, abusing you as they will do so everybody has to have boundaries and you have to set boundaries for the clients up front too so that's part of the understanding 
we have to have the um, the attitude that we have expectations of what the clients do, and of course they learn from what you do. If you're potential potentially going to uh, be somebody who works with them quite a bit, you've got to establish that you're always on time, that you always have the answer for them when they ask the questions, or else they won't be on time and they won't be doing their part of the homework if that's required. The next part is readiness. We talked about 100% readiness being an important factor. And really all this comes down to being in total communication. If you're out of communication, um, if you're not on the same wavelength as the client, it's very doubtful you'll get any results. You probably won't get any referral business either. You probably won't get any advancement in your career if it happens every day. So the potential for growth in this area comes from being in communication. It's out of the communication that grows the progress. You know, if you stay in communication, you're better off. So there's potential being ready all the time with the right answers. And that means you've got to do some backup study, homework, preparation for a meeting. Now, if you ever go into a meeting not prepared, the client will know it. The client will understand that you probably don't know what you're doing. And so it's important to have the answers in preparation beforehand. If I go into a surgery and get halfway through it and don't know where to go when I reach a certain point, I'm not going to get a good outcome in surgery and you can't back up out of surgery too easily sometimes. And if things do go the wrong way, you do have to have a backup plan and, and dealing with people that bleed people that have tissue that has to heal. Surgeons often run into things that are not ideal and you have to know what to do. And it's the same way in business. If you run across a consulting client and you don't have the answers you can't make something up just to be saying something it's got to be accurate it's got to be useful and beneficial to the client they'll soon find out if you are throwing uh, things at them that are not really valid so let's talk about entry into the system how do you activate the say yes program well you might get the emergency call, somebody with a, a significant need right away. They need something now. You can answer them by saying, I can fit you into my schedule at a certain hour. You don't put them off and say they're not important. You take uh, an emergency client into your, your um, schedule and fit them in as best you can to serve them. And so what we do in our business, we reserve two times during the day for emergency clients to, because we know we're going to get a certain number per week. They may all call on one day, they may call on two days, and we always want to see them within one or two days. You, you may have the type of business where you need to see them within the hour. Depends on what kind of emergency it is. You know, some high-powered um, lawyers will understand that they have to talk to somebody within minutes sometimes. If you're a medical doctor and somebody has an emergency, it may be a life or death situation and you need to see them within minutes or they'll just not be a patient that's alive any longer. And so emergencies are variable. And in the business world, fortunately, they're not as uh, urgent as in the medical world, but they still do have some urgency. So look for that to be a prime area to serve people and plan into your day a certain time to see the emergency. New client interactions, you know, the new client is your, your um, bread and butter. You, you must have a certain number of new clients to maintain a healthy business. And so in my practice, I always felt like I needed 30 new clients a month to keep myself busy and to keep my income consistent. And so every business has their own amount of growth and steady flow. And so the new client interaction, you must plan for it and you must take care of them with um, a plum. 
very serious attention to them. They need to feel like they're the only most important person in the world when it comes to a new client, because they are. And then when the new client comes in, you need to have systems to where you can move them into treatment or into consultation or into discussions right away. You know, a, a quick introductory appointment may need to turn into a, a detailed appointment. And the way that happens is to say yes when they ask the question. When I call this the Say Yes program, it comes down to the point of agreeing with people's felt needs. If somebody comes in and says they need treatment for pain, I'm going to try to treat them that day. I'm not going to say you can come in on Tuesday next week. If somebody has a felt need, whether it's a tax situation answered before an audit deadline, if it's uh, to buy tickets to a play before the play starts, they've got to find out where is the address to the theater. I mean, there's time elements that go with requests that people make. And so you have to understand what the request is, what the felt need is, and then you have to address it. And so you just have to say, I will find out, I will do this and uh, have a mindset of yes. So one of the great places to make a difference is the client follow-up appointment with the team. So say you're in a regular uh, checkup appointment, finding out how they're doing with their business and you're talking to them and you're doing some training with them. Well, that's a perfect time to find out what they need that day. People's needs change day to day. And it's the perfect time for upsells and cross sales to get them to move into more business with your company. And, you know, when you go into a fast food restaurant burger place here in, uh, in America, like a McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Nando's, if you go into one of these places and you drive in with your automobile and you order something, you know what they'll always say? They'll say, do you want to upgrade that to Biggie fries, a large drink? Do you want to add a peach pie or an ice cream? So they'll ask you for an upsell. And so what you do when you're in business is you always offer an upsell when it's the appropriate time. And if somebody's ordering food, they're thinking about eating. They're thinking about what they want. But if you put another thought in their mind, they might want to upsell into something better a better product, a better expensive product, a better service of product. You know, maybe they were thinking they wanted um, fish, but you say we've got a special on hamburgers and bacon, or you got a special on chicken. Maybe if you describe it well enough, they'll try the chicken. So this is the whole idea of upsells and a follow-up appointment. You could ask somebody if they need to have more audit for their business. They need to know the new tax laws coming up. Do you need a new audit to see if you're gonna be able to save more money? And, and during these uh, say yes times, if you're trying to stimulate more business, you know, if you put the word because in, scientifically it's been proven that people will say yes 33% more often if you have the answer given, the why and the because, if you give them the because answer in terms of the tax audit, if you say because there's a new regulation that just came out that you might not understand and we can explain it to you so that you would get more money back from the government. So when you say those kind of things, the because statement, you up your sales. And finally, an, another way to enter into the system is when the manager has an appointment and they're reviewing 
the case and you'll have a chance to overview everything that's been done and to say, now we've met your goals. Is there another goal you want to set now? So you can actually plan for the next sessions, the next meetings, the next year's program. You, you can, you always should finish up a contract with let's set the goal for the next year. And what can we do to earn your business for the next year? What goals do you have that we can help you meet? Things like that. So having a comprehensive focus versus a simple answer focus is another part of the Say Yes program. You understand that there's a need and maybe they came in just for one thing. Maybe they called you up just to get some training on one subject. Maybe they called in to order a simple pizza to a restaurant. Well, if you have a comprehensive focus, you could order, ask them if they want to order drinks along with their food. You could say, do you want a dessert? If you, here's a good example. If you go to a clothing store and you go in and say, I want to buy a shirt. I want a long sleeve shirt with a collar and it needs to be a solid color to go uh, with my suit. And then the clerk could say, well, we have these shirts that go with gray suits and we have these shirts that go with black suits. Uh, do you have a black suit? No, I only have a gray suit. Well, you, you, the clerk might say, well, you would look good in black. You, you should probably have a black suit to have some variety and it meets certain needs to have a black suit. And when you have a black suit with this shirt, you put a certain color tie with it, a, a red tie with it, and it gives you the power look. And so when you wear black with a red tie, you're more powerful. And so that clerk automatically sets a new tone because they're, they're comprehensively looking at the situation that the person doesn't just need a, a shirt, they need to have the look of power. And so they go to a greater purpose, a greater power in their discussion with their client in front of them. So that's the comprehensive focus. And so if you say yes to what people ask, sometimes you'll open the door to doing more business. So you offer the best result for the client based on how they present and what their wishes are. It may not be the first question they ask. And you may go into more detail along the way as to how you serve them better if you understand their total situation, if you have a comprehensive understanding of their needs. How you make people make decisions. Here's a simple one. When I'm looking at somebody in my office and they have a situation developing in their teeth, I look at them and go, it's time. That simple phrase, it's time, cuts the chase about a lot of things. And so I'll tell them based on what I know, it's time, and you have to finish the sentence with, it's time to restore that tooth because it's fixing to split in half. And if you let it do that, you'll be in a lot of pain and you'll lose the tooth. Or it's time to order your food because we're closing our restaurant in 15 minutes. I mean, the word it's time will make people make decisions is what I'm saying. The entire, the entire team is synchronized and synergistic. And when, when somebody on the team hears that it's time being said, that means that the person saying it is trying to get the client, the patient to act now or to make a decision now. And then they'll know to flow that patient into the schedule, whether it's today, right now, or whether it's tomorrow soon, rather than put them off a month or two. And so the, the timing issue is always important and you can create and guide people by using proper timing phrases. What happens when you do all these things? 
The Just Say Yes program creates rewards. For the client, well, they get more done in less time with fewer appointments if you cover more ground. If you ask them if they want to upsell, you know, they, they basically get more with less effort. And so you can do more for people, cover more ground if you have the time. That's the whole idea. Because, you know, we started this whole concept of talking about how much we try to save the broken appointment. And so say you get word somebody broke an appointment by giving you a cancellation notice rather than just not showing up and you knew they weren't going to be available and you had them booked for an hour. If you were talking to somebody the previous hour, you could indicate to that person, I've got the time to do that now. And my schedule opened up a bit. So we'll be able to accomplish twice as much today on this call, because I know I've got the time to do that if you had the time. And so you're in that situation, you're giving somebody the opportunity to work longer together with you on whatever your project is or whatever your uh, service is that you deliver. Now the business wins because downtime has been eliminated by filling in the blanks of the wasted time, the broken appointments. If that happens, you get higher production per day and reduced overhead. Anytime that you can increase revenues, you're reducing your overhead. The team wins, you know, the people on the team win because whenever there's less downtime and higher profits, there's always gonna be the result. Higher salaries, more perks, bigger bonuses. Every business should be set up to where the, the more profits and the more uh, business the company does, then the people that actually create the result get some reward for doing that. And so that shit goes to show the Say Yes program can build a team's profits, build a team's income over time. If, if you look at my practice and the dentist that I've taught for many years, when I introduce the Say Yes program to them, a lot of the practices will grow and increase profits $1,000 a day, for instance, just by the thinking of the mindset of the people that we can do this. If you introduce a topic to a group of people and everybody buys in to the concept, then the business is all around us ready to happen. You just have to have the mindset that you can make it happen faster with ease rather than having so many stops and starts. And so it's basically increasing the efficiency of business to happen is what the Say Yes program is all about. You can make business flow at a more rapid rate with the Say Yes program. So what I tell you is that this is a building block. It's not the only thing that you can do to be a better business, a better team member. And these are systems. You actually have to train people, have them understand it, discuss it, or they'll never get it. You build it once and repeat it over and over again. The more you use the Say Yes program and people focus on it, the more it'll happen in a business. So I've, I've taught many thousands of people how to do this. I think you can do it. I think it's something that's very teachable for all of your team members. And if you, if you look at how this thing can go forward, it's just one more aspect of increasing the emotional intelligence of your team and uh, your, your learning ability to do it will magnify your results. That's it. I'm glad I got to spend the time talking about the Say Yes program with you. And um, we'll go back to talking with all of you guys and answering questions as you wish. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Bell. Uh, do we have any question here? Or do you wanna ask something? I'm done with the questions. Um, I would like to know if that 
resonates. No, I, I'm asking my team. Uh, if anyone have any kind of question or anyone want to ask something from Dr. Bill, he can he or she can raise your hand. Uh, by anything? Uh, Samar, all good. Eram, Eram, for what? Anything? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, hi, Dr. Bill. Uh, okay. I have heard all about the conversation, uh, and I've written the two uh, questions over there as well. But the last one that I wanted to ask you is that when is a good time to say no to clients? Because if I, I read it somewhere that customer is always right, but then when is the right time to say no to a client? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm trying to understand exactly the question. So uh, do it one more time. Okay. When we say that customer is always right, then uh, entire company works on that one. But then uh, uh, the client is very difficult and we are not looking any good business. Then when is the right time to say no to a customer? <laughs> okay, I agree. Now, as far as customer service goes, the customer is always right as a, a statement that comes up and... Um, you can choose two things. You can choose to be right yourself or you can choose to have the customer always be right. Whenever you choose the customer to be wrong, you basically just lose the customer. And so a lot of this depends on how valuable the customer is and how many customers you have in your funnel. If you value customers, you'll work hard to make them feel like things work out. Now, I know Sadiq is always working hard to resolve customer issues. And uh, that's one of his focuses is to try to cater to the customer and uh, never make them feel wrong. Now, that we, we do know the customers are wrong quite often, but you can't tell that to their face unless they are abusing the system, abusing you. I mean, we do kick patients out of our practice because they're abusive to us. And so you can draw the line if patients or clients are abusive. You don't need business that abuses you, but if, if you look at it from a point of view of, if, if, if they're not right, it may be that they don't understand and if they don't understand, it's probably because I didn't explain things well. And so if you explain things well and they still don't understand and you make sure that it, the information is there, but they just don't get it, then you can pass them on to somebody else. You, you know, that's why you should always have a manager be able to step in. You should never decide on your own when somebody's being difficult that they can't work with the company you need to pass them up the line sometimes that's why people are difficult in the first place is they want to move up the line to somebody else some people are just that egotistical that they don't want to talk to somebody until they get to the top i've had that happen in my office a lot of times that they they don't want to talk to my assistant they must talk to me and when they get to me they're nice but they're really ugly to the assistants so that's just part of some egotistical people's mannerisms. And so just realize that and understand it. And, you know, in your company, you do need to draw a line somewhere as to what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And the best place to draw that line is up front in the beginning. So that they understand when they're coming in that there's expectations of a patient or a client, just as there's expectations of you, the team member and the boss good question thank you sir uh Elam, did you get the uh it's too long Elam, did you get the reply of both questions yes ma'am i did okay okay thank you uh anyone else 
हाफिज मोहम्मद अवैस जी जी ऑल गुड मैम आई हैव द सेम क्वेश्चन एज इरम एज सो ऑल इज क्लियर ओके ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर बिल आई थिंक देयर इज नो मोर क्वेश्चंस इन द शीट एज वेल यस वी डोंट हैव एनी देयर वाज ओनली हाउ हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट इज फॉर द एंटरप्रेन्योर स्टार्ट अप टू डेवलप अ पॉजिटिव माइंडसेट that was the question number 1 and the other was when some i'm going to paste these questions if you if anyone have any other question related to this they can ask you now uh okay fine thank you very much dr bill and uh, see you on monday now if you are available and meanwhile if i'm going to share the slides with them or uh, share this recording on the facebook uh if they have any question they will post it in a in a sheet now thank you very much You're welcome. I'll send you the slides. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good. Okay, fine, everyone. Ah, uh, आपके पास questions कर लिया करें जरा. अब he is still here. Ah, uh, Doctor Bill, will you sh share the slides with me? I can. Okay, please. Thank you very much. जी जुलकर नैन एनी थिंग थैंक यू जुलकर नैन Okay, fine, everyone. Um, do you have an? If you don't have anything to ask, then we will leave today. And uh, tomorrow we gonna have our uh, uh, sheets. The sheets are ready with us as well with the connections to share it with you. Inshallah, tomorrow tomorrow we'll share it with you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Okay, I see one question you had there, and I'll answer it before I go. When some opportunities come to a company. then how can one make a decision to say yes or to deny it that's the uh, job of the manager or the owner of the company to outline how far can a employee go in saying yes now it, it needs to be quick communication among the team and some autonomy within the team as to what you can say yes to and what needs to be run up the chain to a uh, manager or the owner so it really isn't up to the employee team member to make every decision without consultation and so you have to give teams enough knowledge about what they can say yes to so that it can be a workable situation in my office the people are trained to look at the schedule and understand when they can work somebody in for extra procedures which is the main way we say yes we do extra procedures to fill in those blank spaces in your business uh, you may have a similar situation of time where you can increase time to get more productivity if it's uh saying yes to a financial area you got to be very careful you got to like if you're given the chance to offer a discount you need to know what can you do without going up the mm -hmm. chain to another level for financial things you know you can't just give away everything but you might have a certain amount of leeway that the boss will let you give away something if you're the clerk in a store you know there's a discount percentage that you can give away when people ask and so it really depends on having an, uh, an agreement ahead of time as to whether you can say yes or deny that moment remember if you say yes you're trying to make more business for the company and you're trying to make it a win-win for the client the business and the team that's the whole goal of the say yes program 
is to eliminate downtime that's not productive. That's a Thank good you, question. Sir. Yes, glad to help you guys Thank you out so much, and sir. be part of your uh, training team. Thank you so much, Dr. Bell. Okay, everyone. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Not me. Maybe Monday, though. Uh, oh. You will see us on Monday. <laughs> yeah. I will see them tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Yes. Have okay, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.